Where the hell have I been these last couple months? Hey YouTube, it's Everything He Pan here, and I'm so glad it's summer just because I've had it with school. I cannot express that enough. Thank God I only have one year of high school left because I'm about had it with school. Thank God it's summer. I don't have to worry about school anymore. And it's time to crack down on some videos because I've been slacking a shit ton within the last couple months. So, um, I've had this whole document of videos that I need to do or that I can attempt to do. And I'm going to be doing one today for you guys. And this one is going to be how to install Windows NT 5.0 build 1671 in VirtualBox. Now, I was trying some previous builds, but they would not work. So, I just decided to attempt this one, and this one works. So, now I have something to upload for you guys. So, it's been a whole, it's been a while since I've been on a frequent schedule, but I'm going to try and get back on my schedule of uploading every other day. So, since today is the 7th, which is a Wednesday, I'll be uploading, I plan to upload my next video on Friday, then Sunday, then Tuesday, then Thursday, and so on. You get the idea of what every other day is. So, enough of me ranting about school. I'm going to show, I'm going to do a tutorial. It's about damn time, I know. So, um, there will be links in the description for VirtualBox right here. Um, you guys know how this works if you've been on my channel for um, forever, let me just say. WinRAR will be in the description as well. You're going to need that to extract the ISO from the WinRAR PC website, and it is right here. You can choose one of these mirror links down below to download that. That will be in the description. Now that I got that out of the way, it's time to open up VirtualBox here and create a new machine in the top left. And we're going to call this Windows NT 5.0 build 1671. You're going to leave the version as Windows NT 4, click next, and then leave the memory at 128 megabytes. And now we're going to create a virtual hard disk by clicking create, and then click next, next one more time, and then just leave this at the default of 2 gigs and click create. Now, what we're going to do is go to settings up in the top and go to storage and then insert that uh, NT1671 ISO which like I said earlier is in the description we're gonna start up the virtual machine and it should prompt you to the setup screen automatically as you can see I still have all of my virtual machines I have not deleted any of these I have not touched VirtualBox in probably almost a month or over a month um, from when I last made my videos so, I mean, I had to teach myself on how to do this video because I totally just could not remember because it's been so long since I've made a video and I had to reteach myself on how to do this. So that tells you how much that um, when, I don't op when I don't upload every other day, I forget things and I have to reteach myself. So thank God I upload my own tutorials because I'll be honest, I have watched a couple of my tutorials just to remember how to do things. Okay. Now we're in the setup, we need to go ahead and um, press enter to continue and we're going to go to the welcome screen here and we need to press enter to continue on that as well and a whole bunch of garbage, you I have no idea what any of this means, <laughs> so click enter and then we're going to tap C to continue there and hit the page down key a couple times and then go and hit F8 to agree to the license agreement and then click enter to select on those default things there and now it's going to ask where you want to install this on and there's only going to be one on partition space just because this is in a virtual machine I highly doubt you'd be installing this on an actual computer but if you do you might have more than one of these um, make sure you select the correct one click enter and you can format either one of these I usually do NTFS just because it's newer and I mean maybe you should do the FAT because it's older but NTFS is more um, I'm more familiar with I should say and it's going to ask where you want to save all these files to or copy them all to. Just do the WinNT directory like it has selected and click enter to continue on that. And it's now going to do 
an examination on the hard disk. So click enter to do that. And then after it exams it, it's going to copy over the files. And this should not take very long because the hardware acceleration is not turned off. So that part is finished. We can now remove the ISO just for a little bit after this restarts. So I thought I removed it. I have no idea. And then once that's removed, go ahead and click enter to reboot. And it's automatically going to load into the setup. And it's going to give you the blue screen. You see it says version 5.0 on the top here, build 1671. I'm going to go ahead and actually make this full screen. I haven't done that in a while where I've made this full screen and it's completely black on the outside like this. So, it's now going to come up with the setup screen. It's going to ask you to reinsert the disk. You're going to need to do that by going down to devices and then optical drives and then reinserting the 1671 ISO and click OK. And now it's going to uh, copy over some setup files and now we are on to the second part of the setup here. So now we're going to go ahead and click next to continue on the welcome screen and now it's going to prepare um, the directory. So this takes just a little bit, maybe a couple minutes for it to do. Um, maybe about a minute or two and then you'll be right into the next part of the setup so I'm actually gonna pause this real quick while this goes real quick so I can make this as smooth as possible for you guys and not have this um, be a very long video so I will be right back once it's finished alright so once that is finished it's gonna come up with the uh, screen here where it's detected some devices already for you um, so there's just gonna be some in here just go ahead and click next to confirm that and now just go ahead and do the typical setup on this and click next and then it's going to ask for your regional settings just click next on this after you select your specified regions and then uh, you need to type a name here so I'm going to go ahead and type in just type in everything EPAN click next and now it's going to ask for a computer name I'm just going to call this NT1671 click next and then you don't have to type in a password here just click next and then we're going to not create an emergency repair disk because that would involve needing, I believe, a floppy or another sort of drive in here, and we do not have that available. And now it's going to ask for some optional components. Just go ahead and click Next, and then click Next one more time to install networking, and then click Next to confirm that you want to, and then click Next for TCP IP protocol, and then next for this. You can skip this if you desire, I guess, but just for the purpose, I'm going to do it anyway. And then this should be set as default to work group. Go ahead and click next because that is correct. And then click finish. And it's now going to um, do some more things. I'm going to ask for the uh, date and time zone here. Just go ahead and click close on this. And then click OK on this screen here when uh, the display properties come up and of course there's not going to be any graphics installed on this and um, that's normal just because of how old this operating system is and plus it's really really hard to install graphics on here anyway so click OK on this to confirm those settings and now it's going to copy over some files onto your hard drive and install the operating system and now what it's going to do here is it's going to um, continue to do some more things and then after that is finished it's going to come up with this screen that says your date and time indicated by your computer's clock appear to be inaccurate and of course according to this operating system yes that is correct so click OK and it's going to give you another chance to redo the bio state here and I'm going to have this in the description if you cannot see this on the screen but I will tell it to you as well so you might be able to hear it but change this to September 10th of the year 1997 so it should be on a Wednesday right here September 10th 1997 click apply and click OK and now it's going to come up and say that you have installed NT 5.0 successfully so now what you want to do is remove the ISO once more but you will need to reinsert it after it is restarted so go ahead and click restart after um, taking out the ISO and it may take a little bit for it to restart here. Just give it a little bit of moment. 
and it should restart for you. It's not going to take too long. Okay, so after it restarts, it's going to come up with the OS loader here. Just go ahead and click Enter to select uh, NT 5.0, even though it would select it automatically. But if you click Enter, it's quicker. And it's going to come up with that blue screen that says uh, Windows NT version 5.0 build 1671 up on the top. And it also lists how much memory you have. Now it's going to come up with the uh, log on screen. So what you want to do is go down and go into uh, input and then hover over keyboard and click insert control alt delete. Then go ahead and click OK to log in. And now if you've made it to this point, you have successfully installed uh, NT 5.0 build 1671. Now, um, you can do this if you want, but I figure I might as well show you guys anyway, just in case if you guys were curious on how to do this. In order to install sound, um, you're first of all going to need to reinsert the ISO. So go to the um, optical drives under the devices tab and reinsert the ISO. And now, um, what you need to do is I think there's going to be a setup screen that pops up here quick. So I'm going to wait until that pops up first. Or maybe it won't. Yes, it is. There it is. So X out of that. Go to start. Go to settings up here. It's going to give you options. Just click on control panel. And then it's going to open up your control panel here. We'll make this a little bit bigger. Go ahead and click on multi, double click on multimedia or single click. Click on the devices tab up on the top here. And then click on audio devices under this list. Click add. And then under this list, you want to choose the one that says Creative Labs Sound Blaster 1X Pro 16. Then go ahead and click OK. And then leave the I.O. address as 220. Click on Continue. And then the only thing you need to change here is this MPU 401 I.O. address from 330 and disable that instead. Then click OK. And then you're going to want to restart. Now, now you can remove the ISO for the final time as it shuts down just because when it comes back up it's going to load back into the ISO so now it's going to uh, shut down and this can take a little bit for it to um, reboot here so I'm going to pause this real quick for you guys okay so it's rebooted here and now we can go ahead and click enter to uh, head into NT 5.0 once more and once we restart this and we're actually logged in now um, we should have audio this time once we log in and you should be able to hear the uh, startup sound um, and it does have the newer one um, because this is part of the beta 1 series so what you want to do is control alt delete from the uh, keyboard tab here and then click OK and you should be able to hear the uh, startup sound so let's take a listen So there you go guys, audio does work now that we have installed that Sound Blaster driver and now your um, Windows NT is completely finished. So there you go guys, that is how to install Windows NT 5.0 build 1671 and also how to install the audio on it. I um, hope you guys uh, found this tutorial helpful for you and if you did, please leave a like below um, to know that this tutorial, so I know that this tutorial worked for you guys. And also be sure to leave a comment down below on what video I should do next. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing a vlog occasionally. Um, I'm not too sure on that yet. Um, whether it's once a week, twice a week, every day. Well, every day would not work out well because my life is boring. But um, definitely let me know in the comments if you guys want to see vlogs I've seen a few from like my update videos where I've mentioned that and you guys have wanted to see them but um, yeah just leave a comment down below if you guys want to see those as well and I will make sure to try and do some for you guys not sure what I would film but who knows so thank you guys for watching this again and leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed comment your data down below and do not forget to subscribe once again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.